Now, uh, the UPP in, UPP in, in, Rio. in Rio. This is a I large think that was, scale intervention. Yes. Tell us about it. How did, how did I it happen? I think that was a fantastic intervention. Uh, I'm a very, I'm, I'm a strong defender of it. Uh, there are some. But it's controversial, right? It is controversial because uh, so most of the critics would say that uh, you, the, the state uh, arrived with one public good, which was enforcement, and not with other public goods, uh, and that a whole strategy should involve these two things at the same time. Uh, we are talking about a country like Brazil. Uh, if you want to do it, uh, a concerted type of organized thing like this, you would never do anything. But this didn't end drug sales. No, in, I don't think it did. I don't think it had any, 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 any impact at all. Right. It just had an impact on territorial domination, and it just pushed uh, drug dealing to less obvious, uh, conspicuous, criminogenic uh, uh, type of distributions, and, which and is... I mean, from, you it's know, one way to view it. Wh whatever you feel about drug use, homicides, yes. are, homicides are much worse. And moving, yes. moving it's, um, but let's just talk a little bit about the, the chromogenetic nature of, of different types of markets, right? So this is our, right. our mutual friend, yeah. uh, Jose Shankman, likes to, yes. likes to tell this story about the, the dentist in the supermarket, that, that you, know, you can sell. One way of selling goods is with a personalized provider, your dentist, your tailor, whatever. And the other, other way is you go to a market and you buy from whoever is there. Right. One of those methods is a, it's a lot more chromogenetic than, than others, right? Yes. Because, like, if somebody, I think the arm's length is uh, is much more criminogenic. Yeah, absolutely. Because you can you can fight over that territory. Yes. But if somebody kills your dentist, you don't yeah. then you know and sitting there with a the machine gun, you don't then walk into the chair and say, "Okay, start drilling." Right, uh, right, 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 right. Exactly. I yeah. think uh, relationships are important. I think the nature, the the physical nature of distribution is important. Então a gente está dentro de uma espiral. Essa espiral de violência demorou 25 anos para que se pudesse fazer uma mudança nesse conceito e aí nós chegamos no, no, no início da primeira década dos anos 2000, onde é, existiu é, uma possibilidade de se fazer uma mudança né, na, na forma de entendimento do, de todo o processo de combate ao crime no Rio de Janeiro. E isso tem a ver com o processo de pacificação, enquanto nós... Na, nesse, nesse, nesse momento histórico, já início dos anos 2000, nós temos é, 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 espaços urbanos do Rio de Janeiro dominados por fracso, facções criminosas, onde a polícia só entrava através de ações de, de grande força. Uh, can you just, just tell us a little bit more what pacification meant, what happened when, when the pacification program occurred? Yes, the, the idea, the main objective of pacification was to regain the control of the territory of areas that typically the state did not enter and was mm -hmm. not there. Actually, it was regain the monopoly of power. Of, uh, the legitimate of, use of force. Yes, yeah. the legitimate use of force. So, so the idea is that the police would go there and stay. Mm -hmm. So typically, uh, so they, they hired a lot of new cops and, and let them work in this area. And another key idea was that you would put new recruits to work in these areas in order to, because they would not be that involved with corruption. This place is now pretty peaceful, but it wasn't always so. Uh, tell us about Vigigao 10, 15 years ago and how it became safer. Yes, it wasn't. It, uh, after. Uh, after pacification, a lot of things changed here in Vigigal and not, not most, major part of the uh, Rio de Janeiro favelas. And what was important, it, there was a permanent presence of police officers and police uh, service at this area. So after 2007, everything started to, to, to change because of the pacification policy. So what did pacification mean in practice? Means a uh, permanent presence of the police at these areas and mean that we have a specific um, number of police officers training to do the policing at favelas, doing a kind of community and uh, proximity policing. So this is uh, important. They, they have specific training in community relations uh, as well. They're not just putting random police into the favelas. Yes, they, they uh, new police officers. The idea was that they come here for the first time to, uh, to start here and to start with a new training program on police community. The idea was very clever in this way, right. because the, the idea was to have very well-trained new police officers to start at a new beginning at the mm -hmm. Pavelas. What are the mistakes that were made during that period that... Management. Basically, they don't... Uh, the, the police department didn't uh, follow up the, the initial success with initiatives that could be 
helpful to sustain this program in the long term. So the problem was management at the top? I think so. I think the problem was uh, will plan initiatives and they, they need to, the, the, the police department didn't look on, 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 on details very important to this initiative in terms of how to keep these uh, uh, police officers at the favela trained and uh, keep the, uh, the work they are doing here supported by other uh, parts of the police. So they get more and more isolated in these uh, initiatives and that's, that was the, the end of the, the, the good uh, phase of this.